everybody, it's Scarlett, Pete and Joe here working on the Cola Baler. Now Joe has had to buy some, hang on Joe, keep your hands still. These are called bill hooks and they're the things that tie the knots. And where do they belong? In there somewhere. And it's to do with timing and jumping up and down the cogs, which make, and put it, the knot. it does the knot. But turn it around, let's see the hook part. So this thing has the string tie around it, it grabs a piece of string and pulls it back out. And we've been struggling for how long? A month? Yeah. To work out why this hasn't worked. And today we have a breakthrough. Joe has found out that... This one, too short. Yeah, that bit's too short. So he's turned a piece on the lathe that he's going to press into there and add onto it. So that's what he's in the process of doing now. So what he did was get a... Is this a stainless steel bolt, Joe? What? Was this a stainless steel bolt? He got a bolt, put it in there and turned it to create the hardened end that he needs. Then he cut off the point that's where the screw is. So he's got this little nugget that he's putting on. So this is the front end. And as you see, yes, it is called Cola. It's an Austrian um, strange little baler thing. It doesn't quite bale the conventional bales. It sort of makes some wads, which are going to be fine for us because they'll be light and easy for all of us to handle. This is the bit that gets attached to the tractor with the drive shaft. And there's the side of it. And over there, over here, he is now adding the extension by pressing it in. And this thing we learnt is called a bill hook or the the knotter. So now it has an extension installed on it. Because these machines are so old they no longer make the parts for them so we've had to buy the nearest looking part. And having never seen this machine before, does that turn there? Oh look at that. Mm -hmm. Having never seen this machine before it's taken a month of watching it to work out which bits go where. So this bit that affects this and turns and opens and closes its beak and grabs the thing. Where before this turning action was stopping here, wasn't it? And not affecting it at all. Yeah. So now that actually ch turns it. So this one's finished, is it? Yeah. And this one's got to be shaped like that. Yeah. So that that other piece, this piece here, turns around with this like a, a cam, isn't it? That affects yeah. that which opens and closes and put it together aha so turn it and that opens and closes the beak and ties the knot so in his cleverness he's found out having it straight it won't close the beak this is why he's chamfered it so when it's here, the beak will actually close. But this one, being square, where is it? There, the beak won't close. And he has been working on this one problem for one month. Every day he's been in this shed, turning the big wheel by hand, trying to see why it wouldn't not. Okay. His beak's not closing, so he needs to take some more off it. So, turn it again. Hmm? Turn it again. And see how it makes his beak open and close. There he is, busy working. And there's the next job up on the top. It's just been put out of the way to get the baler in. That's my trailer. It's on the lift. a lathe is a good thing but it generates a lot of strange mess look I've got to find a use for these if you think of a use for it let us know other than the scrap man pretty but not much good for anything unless we incorporate it into a resin table anyhow back to the machinery so now you've got to put it back together He's 
just preparing it for welding. those there I'm going to end this video here because my phone's heating up the next video will be hopefully without the baler working properly so do join us for part two where you'll see the baler actually working in a demonstration of how the knotter does its thing thanks for watching like subscribe and share and come back for part two bye bye